Hi YouTube, in this really quick video I'm just going to show you um, three trees. I'm going to paint them all using uh, rock salt in this case. You can use table salt as well. Uh, table salt, because it's finer grains, just gives you um, a finer kind of look where it absorbs the moisture. So what you've got to do, this is the most important thing when you're doing these, you've just got to make sure your background wash that you put on is really wet before you put your salt on. Otherwise you remove your salt and nothing has happened whatsoever uh, and it's a complete waste of time. So it's got to be yeah, really wet and preferably with quite a lot of pigment in it. It's worth experimenting with this in kind of small areas um, but when you're putting on your big wash if you especially if you're doing like a whole kind of page worth like I did here you need to have lots of paint mixed up ready and yeah you need to get to the bottom and it all still needs to be really kind of soppy wet before you put the salt on um, you've got to sort of practice that because it's the most important thing um, so yeah with the rock salt because it's bigger grains what happens when you put it on it soaks up more of the paint and you get this big sort of like crystally looking effect um, it's probably quite hard to see in this video but it, it soaks up and actually in the next couple of uh, tree paintings that I do it shows up more clearly because I do a darker background so you'll you'll see it happening better in the next ones um, and you can see like the salt off to one side here you can see it's different colors because of uh, the different paintings that I've done um, right so here I decided that the tree wasn't showing up as much as I wanted it to so I just went round with a slightly darker wash to make it show up even more what's quite nice is it maintains all the kind of crystally texture in all the light patches um, and yeah so I, I like using this salt other kind of examples that I do like say I paint like a vase of flowers or something and I put a, a coloured wash in behind all the flowers um, this is quite nice to just get some salt right at the end and just sprinkle it on just gives a kind of more interesting texture in the background Okay, here I put some clouds on as well, just to kind of uh, darken it a bit, and then dab some out um, to make it make them look more kind of fluffy and cloud-like. Um, but yeah, these are just really quick, rough paintings, you know, just just to give you an idea of the technique. So you can see this one; like I've gone a lot darker. Um, obviously, the paint dries lighter than you think it's going to most of the time. On this one, as I go down, do you see I put the salt on? Um, bit by bit rather than get all the way to the bottom and then put the salt on just in case it dries so that's another thing you can do if you're worried that it's going to dry okay you can see there I waited for it to dry before I peeled all the salt off okay and yeah when you're getting rid of the salt this is another thing that I need to say is it's really important that you check that everything has dried before you brush your salt off because what quite often happens is underneath each big grain of salt there's like a little puddle of paint and it may look like everything has dried but actually you've got these little tiny puddles underneath each grain when you go to brush it off what happens is you're just putting big streaks across your um, bit of paper so make sure like it's worth just being patient and waiting much longer than you think you need to you can obviously like get out a hairdryer and things if you want to make it dry faster as well. So this one I'm just literally uh, using Payne's Grey and coming back in and just kind of strengthening it all, adding a bit of texture, a bit of foliage and uh, I'm going to keep this one really simple. Um, notice the dark streak at the top of the um, page what obviously happens quite often when you put a wash on is you get a sort of a blob along the top it doesn't matter with this one because I can just trim it off if you're worried about that you can just dry your brush on a bit of kitchen paper and just um, push it into the uh, line drag it across and that will soak up the paint and you might need to do it several times and keep drying it on the kitchen paper right on this one I went really dark so there's a lot of pigment in this you can see it's got a kind of thick texture to it and that's why I've done a much smaller area on my page and this one it wasn't fully dried um, so what I did was it was almost dry but not quite so I just went in with a bit of um, kitchen paper and just dabbed it on top as well just to get rid of the excess 
and you can see this is giving a, a really nice kind of crystally effect. It's much nicer in real life this one, but hopefully this gives you enough of an idea to see what's happening. So I go in at this point with um, even darker Payne's grey, and I just did the trunk. It doesn't particularly show up very well on this video, but then I've gone in with a white pencil as well, which is quite a nice thing to do if you're ever working on a much darker background. Just use a white pencil to pick out highlights and things, and that makes quite a difference. So I just use that here for the branches. I put like a little sort of moon on there as well, and some clouds, and a little fence at the bottom. Um, again, this is really just to give you the idea of the salt effect, but uh, it's a nice technique. Okay, so if you like this video, uh, check out my other painting videos. Hit subscribe to see anything that I do in the future. And I'll catch you in the next video.